depression, anxiety, stress and some aromatherapy solutions. Depression is something mysterious, enigmatic. It is like an accident, something that seems fatal and which hits when we do not even think that it could be us who are victims of this time. And no solution seems to work. Although Big Pharma sells antidepressants for billions of euros in the world today. And we continue asking, is it hormonal? Is it chemical? Is it genetic? Is it destiny? Is it a curse? It surprises us like a lethal virus knocking us out without warning. All of a sudden we may get depressed, burnt out, as if dead from inside, while the body is still breathing and the heart is still beating. And then the questions start within the turmoil, within the sleeplessness, within the never-ending days of black and black. Or something happened in our life, some loss which was not accepted, some regret which haunted us down into obsessional self pity until we lost confidence in life, some missed once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But one thing is clear, depression is the moment of truth, to withstand from our soul level the call of nihilism, the call of death, the desire for self-destruction. Anxiety and depression are very common problems today. They represent one of the major health disorders, particularly in Western countries. Statistics show that around 7% of adults in the US had experienced a major depressive episode in previous years. Even more important is anxiety. Around 18% of adults in the US have been reporting anxiety disorders. Solitude is often a strong element for depression. It constitutes one of the major problems of public health. Our fast-running hectic society, with its amazing global social media connections and its very easy traveling and outhousing lifestyle, shows at the same time the most striking phenomena of inner solitude, leading to numerous pathological problems, particularly depression. Human beings are social by nature. Positive social exchange is one of the best remedies for many health issues. The paradox in our modern society is that the rich availability of contacts via internet, for example, has at the same time participated in social exclusion and solitude on a global level. Another consequence of our modern ways is our alienation from nature. The growing attraction to a metropolitan lifestyle and its challenges of stress isolates the soul from its inborn genetically anchored potential to fuse with nature and remember from this contact essential spiritual values, values of life, such as self-appreciation, inner silence, integration, acceptance, etc. Depression in this light, often called burnout today, is in most cases the result of an imbalance between the inner and the outer directions of life, whereby the thrust and the juice of our human condition are lost in the fog of ignorance about the true values of our existence on earth. Is it the white pills that will save us? Probably not. Here is a testimonial. When I was thrown into depression, I started to think that, compared to what I was living every day, death must be great. Thoughts of suicide were there, but not really as a call to do it, but as a daily companion on the intellectual, emotional level to assure me that there was always possibility of another solution to escape the total utmost nihilism which accompanied each and every hour of my day. 
on another testimony. Depression is when you can't feel at all. Anxiety is when you feel too much. Having both is a constant war within your mind. Having both means never winning. The physical ramifications of the disorder, such as a racing heart, dizziness, shortness of breath and lightheadedness, frequently go unnoticed or are misinterpreted by those who have never suffered from anxiety. Although the physical symptoms make up a great deal of the disorder, the emotional outcome is exceedingly difficult to encapsulate as well. It is a crisis for evolution, we can say. But depression and anxiety also mean that we can and have to find new answers, allow new paradigms for our lives, look out for new horizons to rebuild our spiritual our intellectual, our social and cultural existence. If well understood, depression and anxiety trigger the most extreme research capacities in us and make us go far beyond the usual tight boundaries of former life. So if depression is that one sometimes decisive metaphysical moment in our life, from where do we get the answer? If nothing seems any more available from the outtrodden pathways of education, religion, society, environment, medicine, from where do we get the juice of life back? Could it come from the aromatic pharmacy of nature? Let us not forget, essential oils are subtle carriers of life forces. The material buildup, it is true, biochemical, but their finer levels are structured in sub-particle energies, which influence everything from the physical to the mental, psychological and spiritual realm. This is a level which no pharma drug can ever reach, of course. They may pass through organic receptors, such as the skin, the lungs, the blood, the digestive system, the nervous system, but the immediate approach is not on the level of material, but rather on the subtle quantum level of our functioning. We have to change perspectives and look deeper into those areas in ourselves where the sap of our inner tree of life runs and nourishes our whole being. The sap is structured in Ananda, in bliss, says the Vedas, the Indian ancient Indian scriptures. Follow your bliss and the universe will open doors where there were only wars, says Joseph Campbell. And not to forget the wisdom of the Vedic scriptures here in the Taittiriya Upanishad. Out of bliss these beings are born, in bliss they are sustained, and in the end, in bliss they go and merge again. Plant consciousness is connected to human consciousness. Plants are meant to help us in any challenge of our human lives. Deep within the kingdom of plants is the hidden desire to link to the human beings and to assist them in their secret way in the unfoldment of life and in the unfoldment of evolution on our planet Earth. There is this ancient partnership between man and plants. They are created for one another. They are interwoven into cosmic cycles of ever new becoming and evolving in shining rings of togetherness. Human life is by far the most challenging experience of our life forms in the universe. But these challenges are not only part but essential enhancers of our human evolution. And there are numerous powerful medicinal plants with their essential oils with carrier oils also, which are indicated to help us in case of depression, anxiety, etc. Actually, interestingly enough, there is quite a number of essential oils which have a connection with our internal biochemistry of happiness. They can trigger, for example, serotonin or dopamine in our body and many other subtle biochemicals because they sit at the switchboard of our brain chemistry, 
once we have smelled them, inhaled them, massaged them on our skin, taken them orally. And they not only influence the neurotransmitters, but access larger areas of our brain, like the hypothalamus, the amygdala, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, etc. All highly sensitive to olfactive impulses and involved in our inner balance, our psycho-emotional well-being. The amygdala, just to take one example, is nestled deep inside the limbic system, the part of the brain which seems primarily in control of memory formation and emotions. The amygdala is specifically active when it comes to processing emotions and it records our reactions, particularly when panic or fear are involved. Essentially, it alerts us of danger and has its role in triggering fight, flight or freeze responses and make us take action against threats. Only in 1989 it was discovered that the amygdala plays a major role in storing and releasing emotional trauma and that particularly odor has a profound effect in triggering a response from this gland. An odor input can be a rescue remedy and can help us to fight depression or free us from a traumatic experience. It is very evident in my personal experience over time that special fragrances from essential oils can break what scientists call the operant conditioning of the amygdala, which means to counteract the habit to be in full stress mode all the time, leading to permanent more or less subconscious state of anxiety or depression. In summer 2015, I was with a group, international group of aromatherapists, on an outing from our international seminar center in High Provence, in south of France. A whole caravan of several cars and minibuses were just traveling together. We suddenly got a call in our front car from one of the minibus drivers behind us. And the call said that a lady participant was not feeling well at all and that they had to stop for a moment on the mountain road. I quickly drove our car back to join the minibus for a moment and tried to appease the lady. When we arrived, the lady had nearly fainted. I slowly helped her out of the minibus and tried to find out from her what had happened. She had a strong flashback and a very traumatic experience with her former partner. She could hardly speak, but what I understood was that she had seen the other side, as she said, the light at the end of the tunnel, meaning she was about to leave her body. I just had the right oil in my bag. It was a small bottle of lemon verbena, and I asked her to hold it under her nose and inhale deeply for a few minutes. That brought her back within a few moments. The oil just entered into the right channels of her subconsciousness cleared the trauma and made her come back to reality. She started to speak more clearly and then slowly explained the whole process she had gone through. Quite amazing. I made a 15 minutes walk with her through the beautiful streets of the ancient medieval town until she was completely all right again. Apart from our own inner responsibilities to enhance positive thoughts and feelings, in order to defend ourselves against depressive moods and the like, the essential oils can give us strong support for the happiness factors of our daily routine. They are filled with life force, or prana, as we say in Ayurveda, and contain the most amazing living molecules for enhancing vital energies in man. We just have to dance to the beauty of their music. Let's go a little deeper and look at a number of essential oils. These essential oils can be taken by themselves or as a synergy. Each of them has been found to be effective for mood enhancement, fortifying the psychology and reducing tendencies 
of depression and anxieties. But the first one here, bergamot. Bergamot is a premier oil for psychological benefits, an effective anti-stress remedy and antidepressant, and an all-purpose mood enhancer. Then, for example, Neroli. Here's an example of a testimonial. Neroli is a fantastic anti-trauma essential oil, which then only needs to be taken in extremely fine cans. Therefore, one milliliter amount is usually enough for high quality shopping. It is often used in children and adults who are still prevented from resuming the right thread of life by trauma even long ago. Surely you know all people to whom it applies. With Neroli, you can pick up on your safe world and start your life again with confidence. In addition, Many other great topics, it is also a great antidepressant. Then lavender. Here's a research firm from Dr. Draxe. Many traditional hospitals, like Vanderbilt University Hospital, are catching on to the benefits of essential oils and are using them in the treatment of anxiety, depression and infections in hospitalized patients. A 2009 study found that preoperative patients who received aromatherapy with lavender oil were significantly less anxious about their surgery than control groups. Other oils such as sandalwood, neroli, etc. have also been used in traditional medicine to help patients better manage anxiety. End of quote. Thyme oil. Thyme has been used since ages as one of the major healing plants of Europe, praised for its ability to enliven the spirit and to fight nervous disorders. Rose oil is cooling like water. Here's an experience. Recently I had a session with a woman whose husband left her. They had been married for over 15 years and he told her he was not in love with her anymore. After he left, she fell into a very deep depression and ended up getting let go from her job. She also stopped eating and was giving up on her life. During a very intense family intervention, she was referred to me by her sister. That is when I got out the rose oil. She smelled it first, and we did a patch test, diluted. Everything was fine, so I put one drop in her hand and told her to rub her hands together and then to inhale the fragrance for at least 15 seconds. She did it. After she finished, I saw an instant change in her energy. Because rose oil is such a high frequency oil, she literally raised her own frequency. She was opening up her heart, her heart chakra. By the end of the session, there was relief in her voice. She was transformed. And I know the rose essential oil was part 
of the reason that this happened. End of quote. Then let's look at Clary Sage. Then orange oil. And then another oil from the citrus group, lime oil. Another one from the citrus group, grapefruit oil. Then mandarin oil. Mandarin oil has a soothing, harmonizing and uplifting effect. These properties have proven to be a good choice in gently calming children when upset or nervous or filled with fear or sadness. It can help with diminishing depression and filling oneself with this new zest for life. These features show a strong influence on the astral body of ourselves. Then let's look at helichrysum. Helichrysum oil has high amounts of special compounds called betadiones, rarely found in nature. They are supposed to be linked to its special healing properties, physically as well as spiritually. It is a magical rod for body and soul, a balm on the bruises of unhealed wounds. Then jasmine, the Arabian jasmine or the Indian jasmine, both oils are uh, some of the prime rescue oils and extremely helpful in cases of sudden psychophysiological shocks. Then another interesting oil, the lemon myrtle. The lemon myrtle oil belongs to the aldehyde group due to the dominant presence of citral in the oil. Then let's look at the silver fir. Then the Fokenia oil or Paimu Siam wood oil, a good oil in cases of adrenal fatigue also and low testosterone levels. Here a quote from Dr. Bruce Berkowski, Paimu is particularly well suited for symptoms such as feelings of abandonment, isolation, being alone in the world, disconnectedness, estrangement from society, vulnerability and introversion. Peimu oil may prove useful in addressing the following symptoms. Grief associated with the death of a loved one, ailments from grief, depression after grief, fear of death, feelings of isolation. End of quote. 
than tolu balm. Tolu balm oil with its beautiful phenyl esters finally has a balsamic influence on the lung function. Its sweet and subtle heart notes cause this oil to exhale a very pleasant fragrance, reminding us of vanilla and benzoin oil and make it one of the happy oils par excellence. Then one famous oil, the St. John's Wood, normally used as a herbal extract, rarely as an essential oil, or uh, oil in maceration in olive oil. Then frankincense. Frankincense, a very famous oil, has strong antidepressive, euphorizing qualities and is famous in psychoaromatherapy to treat anxiety and nervous tensions. The oil has the power to uplift human awareness to that other level. Then Palo Santo oil, known among the indigenous people of Ecuador as the tree that perfumes the axe that wounds. It reminds us of a universal mystery expressed in the symbols of a paradox. Encountering pain or being frightened by death is a secret key opening the gates of a possible resurrection. Then we have the famous basil, the sweet basil, the royal oil from the famous plant of the Lamiaceae family. Basil in Greek, basileos means king, so it's a royal oil, is often used against depression. It strengthens the nervous system and is a good choice in case of mental stress and problems of anxieties. Its capability to improve memory and sharpen the brain functioning is praised in India since old. The Indian basil, the Otsimum Sanctum, the Tulsi, is linked to devotion and protection of the divine according to Ayurveda. And then we look at the Cape chamomile oil, special chamomile oil from South Africa. The presence of linalil acetate in ester within the oil grants some similar properties comparable to lavender as a sleep enhancer and relaxant. Then Ravansara. Ravansara oil works on the psychosomatic levels as an active neurotonic. The cooling breath and uplifting freshness of Ravansara is able to energize the subconscious areas of the psyche and raise the spirit. And then the Spanish sage, the La Salvia Lavandulifolia, a special oil from Spain from the sage family. It helps for a proper functioning of the metabolic system, which is a precondition for harmonious working of the nerves, for example, like taught in Ayurvedic medicine. Then tonka bean. Within the ancient traditions of the natives of the Amazonian eras, the tonka bean played a specific role. It was said to embody an invisible force empowering the shamans during certain ceremonial rituals to transfer a sort of healing energy to human beings and was used in case of depression, suicidal inclinations, as well as inner disorientation. And then the lemon verbena, as we have seen already, 
is an ancient spiritual healer plant. The chemical compounds like the aldehydes and monoterpenes stimulate the deeper layers of the brain to leave behind anxieties and fears and to return back into the here and now. Due to these characteristics, they assist to also overcome listlessness, mental exhaustion, depression and grief. Then vetiver oil. Vetiver is a deep tonic relaxer, particularly for massages and baths. Vetiver oil with its numerous sesquiterpenes and sesquiterpenones balances in depth and bestows the pleasure of being versus doing. And then last not least, Ilang Ilang, a famous oil, an excellent oil for treating insomnia and high blood pressure. It is particularly recommended in case of fears and tensions. The very aromatic molecules of this precious oil reach the receptors of the limbic system and thereby are capable of improving our mood. 